I would say though that going back in our minds in retrospective the last few years, I think this is the best that Orc has looked from a balance standpoint in a long, long time. Lots of things have gone the Orc's way with recent changes, Ultra Vision comes to mind, a few other things, and perhaps most importantly, a lot of experience and good role models to show how to play against it. When you look at players like Focus, when you look at players like Lin, they have shown how to do it, very impressively so. But it's one thing to see it, it's another one to execute, because it's not easy to do. Exactly. Cute is also the ring for the Keeper against physical damage, which is what orcs mostly have. No tech just yet. I would be very surprised to not see a Hunch Soul on this map, but it's Moon. You never know. And a little bit too late with the Blade Master here. That's a almost free level 2. Decisive moment. If this Murloc goes to the Keeper... Oh, it's not. Isoc is ready. Yeah, Moon giving this creep away perhaps a bit too easily, but he's making use of this time. Keep running across the map, and he knows there should be some Murloc still there. Would really love to get that level 2. The biggest issue for the Knight of here is if they don't even get level 2 early, then things get very, very tough. But as we've seen yesterday, Moon is the master of comeback. So even if he falls behind, it's not a death sentence. That first map yesterday against oh. Sock was absolutely out of this mind. And now we have harass happening on both sides. Wisp saved this base build. Looks more like Talons. I also don't see a Hunter's Hall. No expansion. So Moon is going for Cyclone on Northern Isles. That's an interesting choice right at the start of the series. Uh, could also still be Dryads. He kind of invented this new style of Alchemist Second with Chemical Rage. Haven't seen much of that yet. Yeah, so it's time to go for the Hunter's Hall. It's not super late yet. We certainly won't be seeing Huntresses, but lore play, maybe. I'm still of the opinion that lore play is hard to pull off, but Moon is the innovator trying to find a way to do it. But, oh, all right. We have a tell now in the overlay. The expansion is coming, and Ice Orc does not know about it. Oh, Ooh. but he steals the last hit. Dude, that was so close. That was like a millisecond. And the Keeper is on level two. Honestly, I would say this is a great early so far for Ice Orc. Yeah, once again, just like yesterday, all three maps he's starting off well with a clear game plan. This young man comes in prepared, and not like other players did before in a round of 16, in a tough group. You just play, farm a bit of cash. No, no, he wants to compete with the best in the world, and it shows. But can he carry it all the way? That's the big question. He does carry his peon into a torrent totem, just like Lin. Yeah, it's the skip, chop, TP, not sold, torn, totem. This is the new fashion for the orcs. This is the new style that is permeating the meta right now. Isorg also seems to be a fan, and it's working out very well. Dude, the keeper is still level one. It's five <laughs> minutes in. Really good early game for Ice Orc. This map, Northern Isles, can be tough for the keeper. Did no favors for him. Not again. Ooh. Dude, almost not again. That, of course, changes the entire momentum. Is now disabled in terms of uh, Entangle is available. Got to be a little more careful, but he got the staff as well. This is so important you item in the early game in the matchup. It is an expansion up, but not just crept yet. Shadowhunter is coming, and is he creeping or harassing? Looks like creeping for a higher level Serpent Ward. And Moon knows the Blade Master is still around and pulls back. The Blade, in fact, even found the expansion early, had the right timing, he got the cancel, so Moon can't go for the tier 2 expansion. Now going tier 3, seems like he has to go from plan A to B to C to maybe D. He went for a Hunter's Hall, but now he's going wins, he's trying to trick Ice Orc, but this early game was so terrible. I think Ice Orc could easily just now expand if, if he wishes. Wow, that would be brave, I'd say. But okay, maybe against certain Wars there is a thing. Blade Master is in. Is he stealing more? The pesky magpie should be a dust. And there is. Mana burn immediately. But. Oh! What was that? Still. Did he get it? No, he didn't. Ooh, that was close, though. Oh, did he? Um, got the experience, but the demon got the item. Ring of Region, not bad for him. But it's not going to be easy to level up this Demon Hunter. You can see he's still lacking quite a bit for level 2. And of course you want to have him on level 3. And now Ice Orc ready to creep his expansion. We can clearly see that Ice Orc is much stronger right now. With talents it takes a long time until you get powerful. 
And for that reason, the orcs can oftentimes expand very effectively on tier 2. The question is, does Isorg realize? Is he aware that it's talents? Is he aware that he has map control? Is he aware that he is stronger and can expand? It would be the right play, but here is where experience becomes relevant. For now, no towers and maybe not even fortified. Nope, doesn't have that. Late Master's making double sure that there is no expansion again, but now he scouts to the right hand side, and that is finally the confirmation for wins. Alright, seize him. Right now, at the very latest, when he should send down a peon over to the expansion, could still sell the TP to get more gold. Checks out the main, sees the shop. It wasn't a standard talent game, but talents it will be in the end. An ice orc, like all the orcs on ladder, have plenty of experience against the talents. He's got the walker tech, which is the right thing you want to have against talents. But like I said, also you would love to have an expert. Moon again, buying quite some time. There is a peon moving to the right hand side, maybe at the bottom. If we see this correctly. Shadow Hunter making good progress, man. Town portal, mana stone, mantle, circlet. He got it all. And he got it now. Heal scroll and beast scroll on moon side. You could see on his player camera that he was certainly not satisfied with this early game and for good reason. Keep a find the scroll of the beast with the hunter's army. That is great. With the talent army, not so much. Why is that, Remo? Uh, well, the bigger the army, the more effective the DPS output. And honestly, it's when you play talents, I don't think it's about uh, doing as much damage as you can quickly, but the fights are going to be very protracted anyways. It's about having the mana and the health to stay alive in the first place. So I would say defensive items much more welcome than aggressive ones. He sold the Scroll of the Beast. And yeah, Isorg is in a good spot here. But again, this is Moon, we must never forget. Do that, and there's no tower at the expo if we saw this correctly. Just working on the Great Hall. Maybe it can be used as a little bit of a decoy, because that forces Moon into a position where there's no creeps, there's no experience to gather, and Isorg was probably also a little sure that this is not working. But he's spending resources onto a sapper. We go into the Night Elf base, baby. Oh, this could be three. Moonwell's going down quickly. Remember, the orc also has the TP to get out if needed. Oh, Sapper so with Spiritling, but only hit one Moonwell. So two Moonwells go down. Not bad, but didn't get the triple. I guess Moon can recover, but taking fights next to the Serpent Wards isn't too easy. But I would say gold accomplished still for Moon. It was expensive, but he, st he stopped the expansion. That's the most important thing. And that was the slight issue here for Isorg. The expansion came up late. Had he known earlier about the talents, had he scouted better, had he had a bit better of a game sense, he could have started the expansion much sooner. But now, this game is a little bit more difficult than ideally it would have been. Okay then, can he still fix this with the second base or is Moon charging up now? He definitely delayed the power spike of Moon with these two Moon worlds down. Yep, that was also expensive for Ice Orc thanks to the Sapper, but... Moon invested a town portal, has to invest 360 into Moon Wells. This is all resources you want to put into your army and especially into the inventory. And if I look at the upper right, man, that inventory is empty. Demon Hunter staff back, going for a healing potion. Levels on the Night of Side, not too impressive. 3, 2, 1 only, whereas the Shadow is already level 3 himself. And of course, those Serpent Wards are always amazing against Night Elf. Whether it be Talons or Huntresses, they are wonderful, even against bears and especially Dryads. Also, nice to have Ice Orc. Still has the TP. He can still commit hard with the run by play. Surprisingly, he hasn't gotten pillaged yet. Yeah, yesterday he was very early with that. Also with Backpack. This time, not so much. Archer saved by Moon. Nicely repositioning the Ancient of Winds. That cost a bit of production time. But apparently we have the first big fight of the game. A little bit of a defensive play by Icewalk at the same time. Game is getting stressful with the Blade Master high up in the air. No mirror image just yet. That AP is not coming up, but the Treants are still doing damage. Tricky situation for the young orc now. Oh, level 2 Treants. Can they get the cancel? This would be a big play. Moon was defending at home. Took out two grunts. Didn't lose too much at all. It was a great fighting position for Moon there. But the damage wasn't quite enough to take out the Great Hall but it is now very damaged. Might be very susceptible 
Oh, Isaac has to TP home to heal up fast. He knows he has to rush on over to the expansion to save his, exp to save his second base, which might very well be the win condition here. Oh, these uh, peons should probably stay there for the repair. Moon is coming, charging up. Early game wasn't too great, but the fight's after. Kind of good. Here's the repair. Peons, do it. There we go. Can he hold? Is it enough? Time to set up the Serpent Wards. Moon moving away from them. The Pocket Factory also helping out a bit. First Raider goes down right away. Easy kill with the Entangle. Icewalk seems to be a bit unsure of how he wants to engage. Taking a lot of free damage without returning much. Now it's time. Raiders charging forward, fighting the end snares on the Talons. But there is plenty of Cyclone still. We have five available. Blade Master gonna get disabled. Oh, Demon Hunter far up front. Trying to take him out now. Invo Potion Pop trying to kill the Demon Hunter right here, right now. But he's not ensnared. The staff is ready. He can't get that kill, I don't believe. But the Serpent Ward still doing a good job as well. Raid is falling back. Heal scroll used. Nicely healing things up again. Serpent Ward's still strong. But now the Shadow Hunter is out of mana. Moon gets level 3 on the Demon. And the Goat might be turning things around. Demon Hunter is still in trouble. Ensnare. He's trying to staff. He's trying to staff. He's trying to staff. But he can't. Perfect Ensnare lock. Gets the kill on the Demon. But it came at a price. A lot of units have gone down for Ice Orc, but he still has that expansion. Moon has enough gold for the Tavern Res. May need to go for it right away. Level up for the Shadow Hunter, but not too meaningful as he decided to go for Hex Knot. Heal wave for a little bit more hero focus and better creeping. Entangle on the Blade Master, but he is safe for now. Taking out the fairies. Moon, how long can you keep this push up? Feels like he's retreating. Demon Hunter coming. Very, very tanky, but still taken out. Tinker now, item carry, and then round two very soon. Getting healed spots, getting healed scrolls, and also an invul and will be added in. Isoc was able to hold on, but he has to lick his wounds. Heals health running, clarity running, but it all takes a while. It takes a while to recover for Orc, and that's why Moon is right back on the doorstep. Doesn't want to give Icehawk that time, obviously. Smartly. How's he gonna engage this one? Good Serpent Ward setup. Not easy to find the proper initiation here. Yeah, the last engagement was also a bit weird. He had to squeeze through that needle hole there on the left hand side. Now the Pocket Factory is narrowing this down. Wards, of course, amazing damage, but not necessarily against heroes. Clockwork Goblins doing some damage on the right hand side. If they die, they explode, guaranteeing damage at all times. And now. The Raider setup works, but also level 4 on the Keeper. Once again, Ice Orc losing quite a bit. Keeper has quite a bit of mana as well. The Walker's not so much Dispel anymore. Trying to go for the Demon Hunter again with the Ensnare. Does he have the lock? There's a heal scroll though, healing him up once again. Ensnare should be over soon. And there's the staff. The Demon survives. And now the Orc army is about to crumble. Ice Orc has to tap out. GG. And the woes for Ice Orc continue. This poor young guy, man. Great early game again. Moon had a terrible early here, to be honest. Icehawk with a good start, but couldn't quite bring it across the finish line. Man. Almost feeling a bit bad for Icehawk. Starting off so well, and then a scouting mistake. He was a little misled in the middle of the game, and then boom, Moon exploits that little weakness, knows exactly what his win condition is, and when his time to strike is, and claims the 1-0. But just like yesterday against Fortitude, these top dogs have to fight hard to get the maps of, of the Dark Horse in the tournament. Yeah, Isaac maybe also upon figuring out it was Talents, maybe he shouldn't have gone for the expansion then, because if you want to go Expo first, you want to do it very early. But if you don't do it right away, maybe put Towers down first. Two Towers, maybe even three with Reinforced. That is so hard to break with Talents. Almost impossible unless you have very strong heroes. We've seen that plenty of times before by other players, but Isorg there felt the need. Realizing that he scouted too late what was going on, feeling then the pressure of, oh my god, oh my god, I have to expand. Maybe not quite keeping cool enough of a head to realize what the next right step was going to be. Moon showing on a couple of occasions that the early game isn't his, but the late game still very much can be. This is where the master still can show what he's made of. But Moon is certainly not looking dominant so far in this tournament. I agree. I definitely agree. Let's see if he can show his age-old dominance on map 2. Map 2 is a fun one. It's an old one. It's Turtle Rock. Let's go. Can we get a 2-0 here? Every map win for Ice Orc would be a surprise and can be a factor in the round-robin rankings. 
and Turtle Rock normally is a very classic Talon map. Reason for this being primarily that it's terrible for fast expanding. So Hunter's Expo strats are absolutely atrocious and that very quickly leads you to Talon. You could try the lore play, but as we've seen many times, making lures work against Orc isn't easy. Moon would be the one of the players to actually be able to do it. But he's also very good with talents, so why not? We're going to see the first heroes. Keeper expected. Keeper selected. Wonderful. Also on the other side, a Blade Master. And in our uh, gift sub counter, once again, Bud Crumbs. Wonderful. We thank you so much for gift sub number, I don't know, 760 or whatever it is by now. Saving Walker 3 esports one at a time. Starting off with archers, not the fastest creep, of course, only an inch and a war creep at the little turtle spot. But should still be a faster level two than we've seen on Northern Isles. And the Blade Master normally loves playing a bit more passively on this map because you can find a lot of items. There's circle at the shops, there's claws at the camps, there's slippers even if you get lucky at the greens. And the Keeper here can't creep so fast normally. Because sure you can creep the green camps easy, but already the Ogre camp isn't so simple because it's all heavy armor, not so good for the treants. And then every camp is pretty big outside of that. This is why normally the Keeper here, unlike for example on maps like uh, Autumn Leaves, or Tidehunters, especially Tidehunters, uh, can't creep super effectively, super fast here too easily. And in fact, we see him going for Entangle first, not Treants. And that uh, quickly makes us think that creeping is not going to be the idea, but rather harassing. Yeah, run into the base, close to the burrows, try to kill the peons early. But on the other side, Blade Master has pretty much the same game plan. Off into the Night Elf base, his target, of course, not peons, but wisps. And off we go. This oh, seems to be... Wait. Is he gonna get locked in? <gasps> Is this Zoko playing at WCG? No! Oh, no! no! It's a trap! It absolutely <laughs> is a trap. No, there's, a, there's an exit. Oh, <laughs> lucky Isorg. <laughs> Dude, that's really lucky. Moon could have closed the base here if he had positioned his moon wells better. Ooh, okay. Bullet dodged. This could have been game over. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Moon, bless you. Sneezing a little there. God damn. AC running all night, I bet. But um, regardless of Blade Master locked in or not, he's doing some fine damage towards the peons, man. Two peons taken out, and they're taken out pretty early in the tech. This is going to be reflected in the tier two. That means, especially expanding, will be difficult, but I don't think expansion necessarily is Itzog's plan, since the Night Elf is playing one base. Normally the Orc also plays one base, at least for a while. Could definitely delay tier 2 buildings or the Adept upgrade for walkers, if that's the game plan again. But yeah, apart from that, he's fine. Still no level 2. This will change in a bit once the Keeper is at home. And then, yeah. Calm before the storm, I guess. Literally. Oh, look at that. Nifty <laughs> old school archer creeping at the gargantuan. I haven't seen that in a while. Moon finishes also the wall off. And it takes a while, but uh, that's how you can put your archers to good use. Keeper will finally get level 2 at some point. Oh, and he really wants to keep up this harass game. Damn, Moon. Putting out the moves, nice little retreat, but there's so many peons, you can just uh, select your targets there and slowly but steady, these archers whittle away at the gigantic sea turtle. With that, of course, Blade Master can't creep jack, can't reach them, nothing can reach them, really. Torrent Totem coming, that is Walkers confirmed once again. Keeper on level one, so far not looking too impressive. But he's scouting well, he's buying time, he's creating space, which is, especially when playing talents, I guess, his main purpose. He'll be falling off a bit later when the walkers are ready with the dispel. But, uh, you know, he's a good orb carrier, and the talents are supposed to carry the late game. They were able to do it on map 2, and honestly, were able to do it pretty fast, right? Once the master training was finished, things started looking up more and more for Moon. So Isoc ideally would love to get a bit of momentum going. Get some plays in, get a lead, 
before master training is done. Phew. Not that easy though. Keep a level two, being super annoying the entire game. Blade Master, little PTSD here, I guess. But that was as a gift. No? Huh? Okay. Doesn't want to expose himself. And working on that Shadow Hunter level. He's going to be getting level 2 very quickly, but also an issue here for Orc can be that, like I mentioned earlier, many of the orange camps here are pretty damn tough on this map, which means early on tier 2, oftentimes you can't really creep it, or at least not too easily. On other maps, Shadow Hunter will oftentimes race to level 3 super fast. I imagine also here, it's going to be taking a little while longer. Whereas the Keeper will now get level 3. Blade sees what's going on, but he's revealed he can't do too much. And this is shaping up to be a pretty normal Talon versus Raider Walker game. Yeah, I like that Ice Orc is not getting deterred too much by this harass uh, that Moon is putting onto him, all that pressure. He's so far not crumbling under it. Uh, was maybe a little overwhelmed when it came to Macro, but otherwise, this is totally fine and playable. We've seen Orcs in worse position after these Keeper harasses. And the Demon Hunter is not in fighting shape at all. This gives the shop to Ice Orc, who gives up on the harass and the roaming for a bit to rock a big map, so Windwalk always much appreciated. Periapt is a pretty useless item. This blade will be spinning in the air. Extra HP won't be of much use. But I feel like Ice Orc needs to look for some kills, man. He's got the walker, he's got the raider, he's got the ensnare. Oh, actually doesn't have it yet. It's coming now. That's pretty late, right? Is that there is, uh, is the not result quite in time. It's the result of the of the harass early on. And it feels like orcs go heavier on raiders before the the end snare research. I've seen this from Lin as well. I'm not too sure if I Would like it, it that much, because end snare is just so good. Moon is getting away with too much. This is way too much, dude. He's creeping so much of the map. He's getting the level to exactly what he needs, exactly what he wants. Demon Hunter high level, that is your carry in the late game. And maybe even some help with the Keeper and the Orb. Master training is still not finished. And he's just able to do whatever he wants. Ice Orc this time around, really not that great of an early game. But he has an opportunity right now. This Creepjack must deliver. Okay then, Raiders charging forward. As you said, he has the end snare now what's the target first only the ancient of war moon retreating without any big losses is ice Hawk willing to go for the turtle though not yet huh i see weird movement okay pulling back towards the shop maybe another heal scroll maybe another invuln and once again it's hex and serpent wards is hex necessary Yeah, I don't really understand why. It's not like he went Hex first to deal with the hero to force a TP or, you know, look for a kill or something like that. He went Serpent Words first and then into Hex. Normally it's the other way around. Is it mainly to control the demon to not get burned? Possibly. But dude, Heal Wave is a pretty nice spell also. I heard about that. But, okay, Moon... We will not have to deal with that, rather with the little frog. He has no dispel except the wisp, so it can be put to good use. But yeah, this is the next consumable for Moon. Scroll of the Beast again. What's the red spot item for Ice Orc? Battle Bongos? Mm. Okay, but not great. Of course, would have loved to have movement speed or mana regeneration. But it's a lot of experience and we finally arrived at 3-3 with an awesome Blade Master. Moon is creeping to levels 4, 3, 2, is at 50 supply, is buying all the items he needs, keeps creeping up, and is expanding. And hasn't had to fight once yet. I saw he's way too passive. He is way too passive this game, and it's not like even he has an expansion behind it. This time around, Isoc's game plan and strategy is just not coming together. Town portal by Moon, seeing his opponent coming. But yeah, he's so ready. He wants to brawl. It's finally time. Also, a weird expansion position. Just on the back of the turtle, bottom left, not in front of your base. Not at the starting position next to you. Uh, this is maybe something you don't scout at all times. Yeah, nice sneaky position. The orc thinks he has this area covered with the ward, but it's just a little bit out of range. 
If that was intentional by Moon. That's pretty smart. Speed scroll and running away. Isorg is not willing to take a fight at even supply. As we know, Orc doesn't fare too well. They want to have more. And would ideally love to have also some Berserkers for a bit more piercing damage. But this map has no more caps. That makes things a bit difficult. Exactly. Okay. Moon looking feisty. D delaying this more. Inventory looking fine. Double heal scroll. But only a very low supply lead. I saw going for pillage now. When in doubt, go lame. It has saved many players in the past. But Moon is very well aware of how to play against that style. And now willing to take a fight as well. Isoc has the supply lead, but Moon has pretty strong heroes, I would argue. Plus, of course, lots of talents, lots of Cyclone. He masters the one carrying the TP. Oh, but the Raiders found the tree. Okay, that's a good move. The first really good move in a while here for Isoc. This should be an easy snipe for him. Yeah, there's a TP. There's no Nature's Blessing. Easy kill. On what cost, though? Entangle on the already hurt Raider, but this enchant is ready. Can you just walk home? Town's trying to get in range for the Cyclone. Entangles keep getting dispelled. But it's also costing a lot of mana. Isoc is losing a lot of mana way outside the fight. He can't take an engagement, I don't think. Nope. Maybe it would have been better to use the town portal early. Not the greatest losses yet. Walker goes down. Okay. That's about it. One base, one base still. That was an accomplishment by Ice Orc. And he's chipping away, getting a few extra resources now. Thanks to Pillage. And also, keeps creeping. He's over at the red camp right now. Unfortunate for him that the Demon Hunter won't get experience here. But also the Tinker loves that XP. 4-3-2 levels, about to be 4-3-3. Three, three. When the Night Elf hero levels get high, things get very tough for the Orc. Because the Night Elf can always rely on his heroes in the fight. And for the Orc, it's a lot less so the case. Because, of course, of Cyclone disabling them. But, there's one thing that is magic immune. Only one single thing in the Orc army. And it's not units, but it's Serpent Wards. They can't get Cyclone. They can't even get attacked by the Talons. The Shadowhunter can be the late game carry. If he gets level 5, I would say maybe it's still doable. But there's still quite a ways to go. Oh yeah, and Moon is not allowing too much roaming here. Great Raider Scout once again, that's the second cancel on expansion. But there's only the Town Portal to get away. Boots of Keltalas on the blade, more damage when he has the 7, seven second safety with the invo or during the invo potion. But that's very little time, TP home this time earlier. And Isoc looked like he brought the peons. Was he willing to expand? I think that was the idea. Also with a low HP raider, found the Tree of Life in the north. So Isoc is actually scouting and cancelling expansions very well. The double wards, of course, for the superior vision are a big help there as well. And Isoc may still have a chance to win this through laming. But it seems like he can't hope to win fights anymore. Yeah, I agree. Not at that stage. Moon, 1300 gold. That's a lot. He's expanding bottom left now. Tinker is getting more experience and we almost crept out Turtle Rock. TP home by Moon. That's of course a benefit for the Orc. He can force TPs early and also eject oftentimes early by just running away with a speed scroll. A couple of distant chance if you need him. But no endurance aura, so he's not super fast. Okay, last creep spot, but yeah, he's getting threatened by a moon backstab blade. Ooh, that was close. Item rune bracers. Not necessarily a good one, but extra resource that you absolutely need due to all this tree and dress. And this is a pretty economy driven game. And moon's expo only at 50%. Setting up a second one though now as well. Moon has lots of gold despite using all those TPs because he hasn't been losing units. I don't know when he lost the last unit in this game. How many units did he lose? <laughs> Wait, we can see it in the overlay. That's right. He lost literally none. He only Wait, lost no, TPs. No, no, that is um, on a cooldown. I think that's 90 seconds or something. Not the entire game. Oh, really? Yes. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> It's like Did a fight recap well? thing. Oh. Tome of retraining. That's pretty cool. Mirror image can be very helpful against the talent play, forcing more cyclone, making things confusing. 
The weird thing is, Shadow Hunter would also love to have a Tomo Bridge right now. <laughs> Good thing they're cheaper nowadays. Correcto. Is Ice Orc able to follow this up? This is getting so tricky now for scouting. So much attention. You also gotta uh, be careful to not getting caught again. Like the one situation on the left hand side. Okay, he's trying to expand as we are approaching, well, the 16, 17 minute mark. Will Moon allow this? Both moving towards the opponent's main base, trying to threaten the encampment. And of course, Moon has to TP home faster because raiders are scary against buildings, especially. Oh, wait, there's no TP on the Shadow Hunter. Could have maybe gone for a surround here, but Moon just wants to fight. Head on. He's feeling very confident in his abilities here. Alrighty. Shadow Hunter out of the fight, out of position, trying to get out there. Oh. Hex! Oh, reach! Demon Hunter down, but so is the SH. Heal wave wasn't enough. Didn't use the heal scroll either. And now without Serpent Wards, this is tricky. Yeah, that was pretty scary. Perfectly timed Hex. Here, the Hex finally is worth it. I think Moon kind of forgot about the Hex. He got some of his Wisps hexed earlier, but... Uh, you know, normally not a consideration in this matchup. If the Shadow had survived, dude, this could have been a different story. But Moon pushing forward, still feeling strong. But this doesn't have the money for the Tavern Res right now. Hmm. Okay, SH is back. Raiders far behind. Man, that heal scroll holds so much value. Thanks to the Spirit Link, of course. Moon has to invest a lot of Cyclone to stall some time to bring his Demon Hunter back. But he has him in the altar. 100 seconds still left. Is that a mistake? Is that too greedy? We shall see. Heal scroll used on both sides. Blade Master still casting mirror images, still making things quite complicated. Not a good position here for the talents. They're wide out in the open, easily getting caught by the end snares. Moon, is that hubris that is showing right here? Is he pushing out too far? We'll see. End snare on the Tinker, he was in trouble, but the Invo Potion saves him, and now everything on the Orc side is indeed very hurt. Moon does prevail, had also the much bigger army. And Isoc has to tap out. It is a 2-0 in the end for Moon. Second map, much more convincing than the first one, but still a clean result in the end. 